Hi, I'm Tyson Franklin, and welcome to this week's episode of It's No Secret with Dr. T. Now, with me today is a friend I've known for about five or six years now. His name is Jerry Green, and he is actually the marketing director at the Indiana Podiatry Group in Indiana, USA. And that's not exactly, his marketing may not have been where he originally started, but that's where he is today. And he holds a lot of other positions within this group. Jerry is one of the most interesting people I've ever met. And him and I always, we seem to have a lot of fun together. So Jerry, how are you doing today? I am doing exceptional. How are you, buddy? I am really good. It, we haven't spoken for a while. I haven't I haven't been to the event that you and I normally go to for about two years. So um, we chat a lot on social media, but this is the first time we've actually spoken for a while. Yes, this is a pleasure. You have no idea. You were the first podiatrist I've met that I actually had a blast with. <laughs> you could talk with and explain and do things, and you got it. And I think the bond that we have shared has helped me in what I do. Um, people of the practice, uh, Helen Nicole, Melissa, and Dr. Shulman wanted me to tell you hi. They all think very highly of you as well. And uh, I'm excited to just chat today and see what everybody wants. No, no, it, and it does. I, I miss everybody that, um, it, just to let people know that Top Practices is a... Uh, a group in the United States run by Rem Jackson, who's also been a guest on the show. And I went to the event, I think four years in a row where I caught up with everybody. And But I've missed the last two because just the dates haven't fit in uh, with travel. But anyway, Joe, we're here to talk about you, what you do within the podiatry group, which is very unique, that the most successful podiatry businesses I know in the world have somebody in your particular position. But where did you start? What were you doing before you joined the podiatry group? Oh, God, I might as well tell the whole history. Yeah, um, okay, but when you got up, out of jail. Um, <laughs> grew up in a small town, farm town called Wanamaker. I still live in it. I was married at 19, had six kids before I was 35. Wow. I started at community hospitals in the early 80s and said I'd be there one year and work there 30. Uh, what I really got involved in in the hospitals was more... I was vice president of computer operations for a large hospital in Indiana. In 2000, when the world did not end, that technology went into the ORs and ERs, and yeah. I started helping doctors run computers and lasers and different computerized equipment. And I stayed with that until I did have a divorce, uh, didn't want it, got it. I uh, moved on. I ran into Dr. Shulman, and it was a kind of a business kind of platform, and he wanted to grow his practice. He told me a little bit about top practices. At that time, Indiana Podiatry Group had Noblesville and Shadlin and two doctors. Um, since that time, we went clear up to 11 practices, and 10 doctors, and some we closed due to locations or uh, doctors wanted a different lifestyle of what they really loved and dreamed of teaching and educating. Um, but what we did, we followed a lot of top practices, and we grew so fast. Uh, things that have occurred, we now have a corporate office. Within that corporate office, we have a call center that we kind of mocked after one of the hospitals that I started years ago. Yeah. And we take in about 16,000 calls a month. Um, with that, we also have the billing part of IPG there. We have an HR person. We have a credentialing person. We have a person that just deals with new patients. We have the COO, which is Melissa. We have Helen, that is the Helen Nicole, that is the administrative assistant. Dr. Shulman and Dr. Warren have an office in there as well. Tina is our scheduling coordinator, and we also have an accountant. All of those people reside now within corporate because our offices are spread throughout Indiana. So with, how the, with, with all your clinics together, how many patients do you treat uh, a week? That go through um, the, the through the eleven uh, different businesses. About a month worth three thousand. About three thousand. Okay, that's a lot of patients. Yes, yes. Some doctors 
Um, I also, when we were growing, it was a little more, I would interview new prospects that were doctors because of my background dealing with doctors my whole life. Yeah. I've got a, out of six kids, I've got a couple that are doctors. And what I always looked for is somebody that was human, outgoing, go-getters, and really would tell me why they wanted to build a practice. And then we would look for locations. Some of the locations that we would look at, uh, Dr. Shulman was familiar with the podiatrist there. And what we tried to do, they wanted to continue to work that's great instead of you know just buying the practice. We'd bring the new guy on or the new gal on, and they would work together until that doctor was ready to retire. Okay. Then I would take each doctor around their location after I got used to what the location was and how many offices. And this is a key part of what a lot of people don't understand. Before you hire a doctor in a new location, you've got to do your homework. You've got to meet every doctor's office that you can. You've got to take care of the gatekeeper at the front, become best friends with her. We drop off mints. We drop off packages about our practice. I become friends with them three months before I ever hire a doctor for that location. So when that doctor comes in, I'm not standing at the front office in my scrubs with a doctor beside me, and they don't know me. This way, they do know me, and I'll say, you know, just give me three seconds. We just want to put a name with a face. Yeah. Oh, Jerry, will do anything for you. And actually, what has occurred over the seven years I've done this, there are a lot of people that may be an hour away that are friends um, that will contact me. I've had a death in the family and a lot of them would even drive there that were off of people. You really get to know them. You have to have a personality that you meet no strangers. It's not always your look. It's how you respect someone, how you listen to them, listen to their problems. Then you joke around, you have a good time. But that's the part of my job that I love the most. Uh, it is the most exciting thing I think that you do when you walk into an office and you get that first smile and then you tell them who you are and what you're about and no expectations. I just wanted to introduce our practice, dropped off a small bucket of mint and maybe a bag of chocolate and I'll be back in a few weeks. And they're waiting two weeks. They walk well, you're back. You didn't think you'd be back. Nobody ever does. <laughs> yeah, no, nobody ever comes back when they say they're going to. Oh, just I just want to go back a step. So if somebody's listening to this for the first time and they're going, okay, so what is Jerry's role? When I introduced Jerry, I mentioned that he was like the marketing director. And so I just want to point out some of the most successful podiatry practices I know, and this can apply to any business. So if somebody's listening to this and you're not a podiatrist, that's fine. Just Just keep paying attention to what Jerry and I are going to say, especially more so Jerry. <laughs> and <laughs> and what, what we're talking about is most people will have a business, say a podiatry business, and they might go out and about and they say hello and they do a few meet and greets. But once they get busy, they never get their bum out of the practice. The idea of having the marketing director coming in is to help the podiatrist grow his business and to actually market the business and be to that, that face that face of the business. And I think the other term we used to call it was the patient and community relations manager. That, that's correct, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. So <laughs> just want people to know that, that Jerry's role is to work with the podiatry business to help market the podiatry business. But you actually have assistants helping you as well now, don't you? Because you got that big. Um, I do. And they do a little more of the social. And that would be Helen Nicole. She helps out. Uh, she doesn't go out and do any meets and greets. Yeah. Uh, she does help with social media, and that's a whole different subject. We'll get to that in a little bit. What we found out going out, the consistency. In today's world, healthcare has changed so much. And then we actually, when we start getting new patients for a new doctor, we put them on a list. Okay. We go visit them monthly, and we have a thank you from the doctor. The doctor actually sends a thank you every time another doctor sends us a patient. We in the practice, also the administrator, the COO, sends a thank you to every new patient. We try to touch our patients in so many ways, social media, and I'm kind of going to 
jump into that just expect with having as many locations in all different cultures we have created a facebook page for each location we've created a google plus page and a google business page we also shoot everything out to linkedin twitter pinterest what else uh that instagram and usually we get about google about eight thousand uh clicks on our pages a month our facebook's about the same Sometimes in a post, we may get up to 3,500 clicks. And what our posts are about, our doctors write their own blog. And they'll write about what kind of patient they want or different facts and healthcare things about the feet. And then we run that out through social media. Yeah. At least three posts a week. And if the doctor is writing, he's got his picture there, and they all go back to our website which really really works well but it's fostered um but what happens when you brand yourself and you continually go out and you give your information and your friends you just created a family and it wouldn't matter what business you had people don't understand people don't want to read anymore they want to talk they want to see they want to video it, it, it it's just how society has changed and when you become a family with all these areas and they know you by your first name, they expect you, they send you letters, they'll send you Christmas cards. And it's not always marketing just the doctor, it's marketing a practice. Uh, what we do and who we're about. Uh, I'm not scared to go into an ortho, that's been fantastic. Uh, you've got to let your guard down Think outside the box, walk into an office, and you've got to be very humble. People love that. What did you do this week? Well, I worked in the garden. I picked some tomatoes. I swam in the pool. Or then they become friends with you on Facebook. Oh, I seen you do that cannonball. Do you really like wine? I mean, they get to know you, so you are right. My face is the first one that people see about Indiana Podiatry. Okay, I just, I just want to ask a, a couple of questions though before you go any further. Was with, with your social media, say Facebook, for example, you said that you do an individual page for each practice. You don't have one main Facebook no. page that all the practice feed into. Okay, so if people have got multiple locations, then... Well, and what it does, yeah. say you have uh, eight offices and in your Tipton office, you had Dr. Gray. In your Richmond office, you had Dr. Jones. In your one of those areas, have a different culture. Indianapolis is a big city, so therefore, you have a total different culture there. So when yeah. this page is created, it looks like they're downtown. It's got a picture of the doctor. Every post on that Facebook page, no matter how it comes out, it looks like the doctor is doing the post on all of our pages. So now the doctor is growing by recognition. Yeah. We're sending out information. We're touching people every single day. You know, it, it's like our email list. And I had questions on it. It could be clear up to 19,000, but the actual good ones may only be 16,000. People have to really watch this. You send information out, and you and I get how many emails a day that we got? Bleep, bleep, bleep. You don't want to beat somebody to death. Those people that don't want you are going to unfriend you or uh, delete you from their email account. So we try to really watch what we're putting out. We are starting some brand new things, and I'm not going to tell all, but yeah. <laughs> some of them I will. Yeah. Um, since video is the new thing, uh, you have a new doctor, let's have him do video blogs. We get so many testimonials a month. Our testimonials come from several different platforms. It could be Facebook. It could be Google. It could be we have cards in the office people can fill out. It could be somebody posting right off. We have a couple things we've created on our own. And uh, Helen Nicole's very good with coding. And each one goes out after a new patient. And it comes in a letter that is like Dr. Shulman is sending it. And all they do is click here. 
and it lets them do a review. Yeah. The thing that you and I both know that's very difficult, sometimes Google does not want to play fair. And if that email went to a Yahoo person, it may not be the easiest form to do. So we found out little tricks. We're trying a new thing that has been very successful. I'm not going to tell you what it is. You'll see it come out really soon. <laughs> and oh, can't, can't you, give it, you, you give us a hint, and, can't you? <laughs> can't you give us, can't you, can't you give us a hint? Um, it's something that we have in our office that a younger generation would jump on and use it a lot quicker than the older generation. And when I hear some doctors say, well, a lot of people don't have an email and a phone. Yeah. I don't want to offend anyone. But if you've got somebody with an email and a phone, they've got a paycheck, that's the patient you want. They're going to have money to spend. Some of the older, that's a total different story. They're still going to come to you no matter if you send an email or not. Yeah. You've got to think a little more in the future. And you grab these young ones and these young doctors. What a better way to get something across when they come up with an idea and you both go with it. Now they're excited. They told all their little doctor friends and their people and young ones. It's like, that's perfect. If you can get your doctors involved and they see what you're doing and they're a part of it, everybody in this world, when they see their face and something they did and people like, that's what goes on today. And they look, oh my God, we got 6,000 clicks. We've got a new couple that's married, Dr. Baker and Dr. Crow, and they're expecting a baby, and we did a reveal video. And I'm telling you, people from everywhere were like, oh my God, they're having a baby. Look at this, look at that. It had nothing to do with the doctor. Oh, no, no, no. I, t- I totally agree. And a lot of people, and I mention that a lot in yeah on this social media page, especially, say, Facebook, for example, is... It doesn't have to be all about your practice. Is bring in a little bit about your own personality and the people that work there and what they're doing in their yes, in their social lives. Yeah, your patients want to know who you are, and the more they know, like and trust you. They they want to see, just like Dave Freeze does. Even when Jack and you, it could be something silly. It could be the dog looking at the snow. If you look at the, <laughs> that was the today. That was today's post, wasn't it? Yeah, the dog yeah, looking at the snow. Would, we try to do that. Some of our doctors will. Some will not. If you take the horse to water, you can't make him drink. Cool. Well, that was something you said before that I was just going to touch on too. You said that all the doctors or podiatrists that work in the businesses write and create their own blogs. So are they writing and creating, when you're saying just a blog post for Facebook, or are they writing actual blogs or video blogs for your main they, website? The video blog is brand new. The first one will come out from a new Dr. Baker. Uh, he's real excited about it. He even wants to edit it. They know everything has to come to me. Yeah. The reason why, I will not boost the post on Facebook unless it's ran through our website. And the reason why, if I send that post out and it came from DSS, Boxers Web Marketing, our website. Yeah. And somebody clicks on it and it goes back. Now you just opened a candy store. Oh, they've got this many more locations. Oh, look, they've got an article about that. Oh, look what this doctor looks like. Our doctors, we do our own video bios for the doctors. We've got most of them done. The new ones we're still working on. But then somebody can click on that picture and it this doctor's talking and tell him, I got two dogs, we do frisbee, we do this, my wife and I are expecting a baby, blah, blah, blah. People want to hear that. They really do. They're, it's not that they're nosy. They want to say that you're human. They want to know that you're somebody that cares about them and have the same, likes the same things. You like a big sandwich, you like a margarita, you might like a glass of wine, you might yeah. like a dog. They put that with that doctor and that's when they're a lot of them didn't get it, and somebody has to tell them, and some will do it, most of ours will. And then you have to remind the doctor, dummy this down. I hate to say that. I think we'll get out of a lot of the wordy stuff once all of our blogs become video. Yeah. But, we, you, but before I, you said you, you can, like, 
the saying you used was lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. When a, when a new podiatrist uh, starts in your business, is that part of their contract that they will contribute and they will be part of the team of creating content? Or is it like you, you sneak that in after the contract is signed? When you interview and they ask you, you ask them, what would you do to build the practice? You know, blog, this, that. I ask every doctor I interview, your homework, I want this sent to me by such and such date, and I'll present this to the owners, and then we'll do the next step, and then the owners will contact you. Their homework has whatever they say they're going to do goes in their contract. Okay, that's good. So it's part It's part of their contract when they start. They know. When they start. That's good. Now, within two years, their contract may change, and I'm not going to touch a lot of that different that's Dr. Shulman and Dr. Warren do that. On the board, I hear, do hear what goes on, but that's left for them. But uh, if it's a way, honestly, it's the best thing for them to get their name out there. Because some doctors think, I don't have time for a blog. My answer is, you have time. If you don't have time, nobody's going to know who you are. They're writing, and they're going to tell in their blog, no more than two paragraphs. And it's going to go out with a picture. It's eventually going to be a video and they're going to talk. And it's not even going to be a minute. Yeah. But it should be part of that. It's just part of their professional development. To me, To me, putting getting, getting your thoughts out of your head, whether it's on audio, video, or written, if you're a, if you're a professional, regardless of your profession, you should be getting this information and sharing your thoughts with the community. Exactly. All it does, this is unique. One of the doctors, Dr. Kilberg, has been with us 15 plus years. He writes more content than any other doctor. His content, what I tend to use, is when I go into an office and I do a doctor to doctor visit. Because this information is written for a doctor, not the general public. Yeah. And we may create another inside of, I try to teach our doctors the worst thing they can do is go out there and post a video of an ingrown with blood and all this stuff. People just, oh, I don't want to see it. There's a place for that. And that place would be somewhere inside your website where somebody would have to actually, you got to be 18 to click on this, blah, 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 (laughs) and make them work to get to it. There's a couple of web, there's a couple of websites out there that uh, and uh, YouTube channels that if you want to see some just really gross uh, toenails and and other things getting squeezed um, or cut off. Oh, and, and and you know right there's the thing we in healthcare people or the business that we're in we've seen it yeah but the people that haven't they say. 75% of people still get upset almost sick before going to a hospital and 50 do it with a doctor's office until they get to know them. Why would you want to turn somebody away by showing them that before they ever walked in? Because this person, and I'll down man, oh, I got to hang now, I got to go to the ER. They're scared to death before they ever come. Why give them something else? I actually did a post on Facebook and they have new rules now and it had a picture of a needle not stuck in a foot and it was a drawing and I boosted it. They turned it down. I took the needle off and put hearts and they accepted exact same content and they got 5,000 clicks. (laughs) You know, that's the thing, you know, sometimes I don't like what Facebook or Google does, but they do it for a different reason. I'm not, that's their deal, not mine. I follow a lot. I also try to have a marketing meeting with not only the owners, but the core people that really run IPG. Yeah, well, I was going to say that with the Indiana Podiatry Group. Do you sit down with the owners and you know the, the key members of the team and sit down and work out what is your strategy? Do you do it on a, a weekly basis, a monthly basis, or is it like a, a quarterly get-together to really work out a strategy and then you work out what tactics you're going to use to um, fulfill that strategy? 
Well, um, I'm going to kill a lot of things in one hit. Yeah. Every morning I turn an in the loop out and it goes to the board of directors, which is the two owners and Melissa's the COO. So, so what's that, what do you say you do each morning? Uh, every morning at 6 a.m., I send an in the loop out. Oh, in the loop. Okay. And it tells where I'm going, what I'm posting that day, what I'll be working on, and I send it out to them. A lot of them respond back, some of them don't. I do not usually give any itinerary of new things to the doctor until Melissa, Helen, I, and sometimes Patricia have got together as a group over the lunch and said, hey, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? I see this. We throw a lot of ideas around. And I don't do a lot of the CRM part, which is the e-blasting and everything, but I know what it is, and we usually jump back and forth. But it, that's what Helen Nicole takes care of. Yeah, Melissa and her monitor that. I do more of the everyday social media to all your platforms, and I do the shoe leather part of it so that when I'm out there and a new doctor comes, I have all this information. I can tell them who we are, look at us on our website, look at us on our Facebook. I also found out a really neat, new creative thing. Say you've got a post and you can hyperlink a doctor's picture to a video that he's done. Yeah. I can take a picture of you, put you on my Facebook page or my DSS and create it. And right when your picture comes up, they click on it to go to something else, but it had that article with it. And it's how to hyperlink the picture with a URL. And I've learned how to do that. You know, I love what I do. I really do. And I think of new creative ways that I can get to people that people want. It, you've got to listen to your clients. And your clients start out in the shoe leather world, that very first person you meet. How do you get past the gatekeeper? How do you get her to be your friend? How do you get her to trust you? Once you get past that and you stay consistent, you've got it down pat. You really do. All the other things in this world that we see and do, there's so much hate and anger. Be nice. Put a smile on. Tell people you love them. You know, who cares? You may never see that person again. I, I think it does take certain people. And if I ever knew someone that could do my job the way I do it, I think it would be you. <laughs> no, <clears throat> I see what you do. I, I've watched you and I watch people. Rim's very good. You're very, I mean, have you ever noticed somebody when they talk to somebody, they, how their body and language and everything else, you can honestly tell they care. Yeah. And there are certain people out there, you know, I'll hear people say, I'm going to hire a marketer. You would hire that person? My God. You know, I think it got to have at least a little uh, finesse with people and what to say and have a good time. But uh, the other parts of it, I, I swear, in every aspect, it's being consistent. And, but but I, I like what you said, too, earlier on, where you send out that uh, email at the beginning of the morning, yeah, 6 a.m., good, good time to start. Uh, in the loop. So you, you let the owners of the business know, okay, this is what I have planned today. This is what I'm posting. This is where I'm going. This is what I'm doing. So they know that they have a, They don't have to be involved in the process themselves. They just know what is going on in the background and what is keeping their business going. Yes, and owners question everything. And there's so they should. <laughs> there's a thing that you can also get on your phone and it's called Mile IQ. And what it does when you take off and you say you're going to Tipton, yeah. it will have where you've left, how many miles, how many places you've stopped, and you can even print that off at the end of the month and set it on their desk. And then it will verify that you've actually been there. Okay, what's, what's that app called? It's called Mile IQ. IQ. It's an application Mile, Mile for IQ. my iPhone. Okay. But I think that's a good. I think that's a good app because, especially for people that are out, yeah, you know, based in a business and they're out and about doing calls and things like that. And of course, yeah, you might have to detour and you do something personal, but that's fine as long as everything is getting done. I think it's a great way of actually presenting that to your bosses or to your employer and say, 
Hey, look, I've got nothing to hide. You, you never want to give them a reason to say, are you doing this? Yeah. You know, numbers for new patients can be high, be low, different factors. We had 18 below a couple days, people cancellation. We had 115 cancellations in a week. And, you know, then you'll, the doctor will say, our numbers are not right. Well, was the doctor out? What was the weather? Blah, blah, blah. Well, you, gonna... you just said then it was it was 18 degrees below zero. Yes. Yeah, well, that, that looks going to keep a few people at home. <laughs> it is, or a snowstorm. Yeah. Or, you know, it, a lot of different things. And, and sometimes they forget that. It's way, they're above that. And then they have to get back down into the real world here and say, oh, that's right. <laughs> I don't have time getting to work, or I noticed this, or we had this happen. And the less you give them to question, and they're still going to question. But I think, but I think that's that's a good question that a lot of people should be asking. Not, yeah, with with any marketing campaign they do, and it, it could be something as simple as a letterbox drop. If if people were doing that, yep. is when you're doing it, keep notes of the weather. Yeah, what what else was going on at that particular time? Because I've seen people do a letterbox drop and they go, it always worked and now it's not working. I'm going, yep. well, Cairns was flooded for two weeks. So, yep. yeah, and we had torrential rain for two weeks. A letterbox drop at that time is not really going to work compared to when it's perfect weather. And then the next thing I do instead of in, with in the loop every morning, I'm Melissa, the COO, and yeah. I talk. I'm going here. Do you have anything you need me to pick up? Do you want me to get something here? This is what we're doing. With as many offices as we have, we are the first one every office sees. Everybody comes to me. I'm out of this. I'm out of that. This is not working. This is broke. And I look at every office when I go in. Does it look presentable? Does the carpet look clean? Are they using the right paper? Are they putting out the right materials for the patients? How's the doctor look? What's going on? All these things. Then at the end of the day, at five o'clock, Melissa calls me every afternoon. Would you see what went on? And I let her know so that we are aware of every single cog in the business, what's going on. Could be an employee that's unhappy. Somebody just got hired that probably shouldn't have, or somebody's really done an outstanding job, or this needs repaired. Or this doctor's asking that, or you, know, you have to keep someone looking. What a better person! Yeah. All of our corporate people do bounce in and out of all offices. It's difficult when Chipton is two and a half hours from Seymour, so you got to plan a day when you're going to go, and that's when I'll also be the one that takes whatever they need up there, tell them what's going on something new we're going to do and i'll tell you this that businesses that are spread out this helps immensely we used to pull all 100 employees into corporate and it was devastating it worked but you got to get them all in corporate you shut the day down for half a day you've got to get people driving two hours up there we're doing our internal webinars now and educational and we're doing them on lunch and what Melissa will do, she may pre-record them. At first, she was scared to death. Oh, John, you're going to video? No, just calm down, honey. It's all right. <laughs> Get your list. Tell you what you want to do. Tell the people. Then have them answer back. You're there in their mind. They're sitting at their desk at lunch. It needs to be no more than 15 minutes. And I think if you did it every two weeks, once a week, quick, fast, high, what's going on? It makes them feel like they're part of this big group. Because a lot of times it doesn't feel that way. They feel like they're out there by themselves. Some of them choose to be out there by themselves. But yeah. we're trying new things with the technology that's out there today. The things you can do, and then nobody can raise their hand. Well, uh, nobody listened to me. I asked for thank yous. I asked, no, here's your opportunity. At the end of this webinar, type anything down and send it to me that you need right there. Not that you're going to get everything you want. We also ask them, what's your wish? What's a wish list? What things would you think the office needs? What's going on that you think we can do better? 
you can get that communication. It's brand new. We're starting it and have been this year. Another thing Melissa's doing, we use paid core and every employee has to log in to get their time. And there's a flashes up, Melissa put a positive picture, a positive thing. So every day there's something positive that every employee is seeing. And I, and I think the positive part of it goes a lot further. Maybe you had a rough morning. Maybe your two-year-old didn't do what she was supposed to do, or he jumped off the bus, or, you know, all kinds of stuff. By the time they get to work, let's make this professional, but let's have fun. Let's start it positive. Nobody wants to walk in and say, I see that you didn't do this yesterday and that yesterday. No, that's not what we want. We'll get to that. You'll figure that out real quick. <laughs> But make it positive. And that's, you know, that's a part of marketing, but that's also a part of business. The number one factor that employees leave a company for is because they feel disrespected, treated unfairly, or not appreciated. And those words are all different, but they mean the same thing. So, so Jerry, I would hazard a guess that you came in to the Indiana Podiatry Group as a marketing director to help them with their marketing. But it sounds like now you've moved beyond that particular position and you're, you're doing more of like running, oper- you're more like a, an operations manager. It's a group of us. I still do 30,000 miles a year on my car. Yeah. My shoe leather still is the number one feed. It's close to social media. But what actually we do, since I can do the morning call and the afternoon call, then Melissa and I have taken care of a lot of things. My background, I never lied to Dr. Shulman, but I used to do. I was in a position in my life. I went through a divorce. I stopped the big job. And I just wanted something. Yeah. When I worked at community, I was business development for... 20 some years and there was one hospital now there's 27 and that was part of my background but for years I was also stuck in an OR for seven days a week eight hour shift and when this one came up it was like wow so little by little I used my business sense with the marketing world and I knew who I had to contact to make it successful to get referrals you got to take take care of the gatekeeper every single time. And, and just to point out, if someone doesn't know, but when we've referred to the gatekeeper a few times, if you go, who is this gatekeeper? It's pretty much just like the practice manager, just the person at the front. That if you want to get in and and talk to the business owner, you've got to get through them first before you're going to get anywhere else. Have you ever noticed walking into and say you were going to do a uh, buy something for your company, and they've got this little office out front and this lady sitting at this desk. She could be the lady that answers the phone. Yeah. Whatever that first person you see, whomever has made that decision, you get past her, you got, it's good. And you may not do it the first time. They also are like, hey, this guy, I don't even know from Adam. He's got scrubs on, got his name plate on, he's carrying stuff. It could be some free. I don't know. <laughs> but if you never go back, yeah, they'll yeah. imagine that forever. Well, it's, it's funny It's funny you say that, though. Like in my own podiatry business, the, the amount of people all of a sudden, someone would rock up and they go, hi, how are you doing? I'm Brian. I've got you know whatever business you know, down the road here. I go, hey, Brian, nice to meet you. He gives us his business card. Quick chat and he walks out the door. Never, ever will I see Brian again. Brian no. never comes back. It was a one-off 60-second visit, and he left again. And I go, okay, I don't know who you are other than the business card you've just given me. I, what, and, and, already, and I may already use that service somewhere else and never, ever means contact with, contact with me. And they wonder why it just some, sometimes some of the things they do just don't work. It, 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 and actually, that's the deal. It's the consistency. Now you showed up the second time, you're building trust. Yeah. By the third time and the fourth time, now 
you talk to five front office ladies, you know, I can go into some places and it's a mom and pop. I can go in some places and there are 50 front office ladies. Who do you pick to make them all happy? <laughs> and, and, and that's, you, you may joke. And I'll say today I bought the mint and chocolate. She goes, well, I'm kind of on a diet. I said, would wine be better? She said, oh my God, I'd marry you. Yeah. <laughs> I like to laugh all the time. You know, and there are times I have taken a bottle of wine to an office. Or somebody says, I don't like chocolate. I like salty. Remember that. Write the note down. Put it on your list. You walk in the next time, and the girl sat beside her likes chocolate. She likes salt. You got a bag of Lay's potato chips and a bag of chocolate. You're mint. And they're like, oh, my God, my husband don't even do that. Yeah. That's the things you do. It doesn't matter what business. You have. So it's not just it's not just going in there and introducing yourself. It's also paying attention to the listening to what is coming back to you, keeping a mental note of that. It's, but it's no different to talking to a patient or depending on who's listening. It's listening, you know, talking to a client, and the client tells you, "I have two sons that play soccer." And then the next time that person comes back in six months later, and it's middle of soccer season. You have the choice. Say nothing because you didn't pay any attention the first time. Or first thing you say, how are the boys doing at soccer this season? And straight away, that that person's going, my God, they actually listen to me. And, and it's not that difficult. And after you do it enough, it's like meeting your sister that you've known your whole life or your brother. Well, she does this or he does that. You know them. Yeah. But you yeah. don't get that relationship by doing it once. A lot of people forget. I'll hear doctors say, well, I don't really think you need to go to these office. Sometimes I could be a butt and say, okay, I won't. And I have done that in one location, not for that reason, because we were building another. And when I went in, it was a month and a half. Oh, my God, what happened? Are you all right? Did you get sick? Blah, blah, blah. All these questions. I apologize. I said, no. I said, it was 18 below that day. You guys were shut. They didn't know any different. Yeah, it's the fact if you don't, and you've got to stay consistent with everything from your social media to your touching of each office going to it to how and what you're telling people. Branding is a lot more than the look, it's what the front office say or the call center says when the phone rings, it's what somebody looks and acts like. Every single person in the practice is supposed to be wearing royal blue scrubs with their name. I don't care where you work. Yeah. We want yeah. it to look professional. And we, you know, when you turnover is turnover, a lot of people get upset with that. Today's market is much better than it was five years ago. You can get a job anywhere now. I mean, it's abundant. So, how do you keep these people? They'll, some younger kids will leave for a quarter. And I'm always the first one that raised my hand. You know, if you feel better and you don't want to be here, then you should go on. I'll never beg anybody to stay. I want them to love what they're doing and at least show interest. Because some people get upset, oh, our turnover is this or that. So be it. That's life. We can't change that. We can help by treating them with respect. We can act like they are part of this and make them feel and make them honestly be part of it. you got to pull them in. You've got to make them. You know, in a perfect world, this is kind of a side note, but when I was at community hospitals, um, you in the state of Indiana, you could not be just an employee to get benefits or stock. You had to be a doctor. Yeah. A group of us got together that was an upper management, and we formed this company called Blah, Blah, Blah. And this company then was the umbrella over the hospital that did their maintenance, their management, their anything. But then you could buy into that company. And that's why bigger companies do that because then they get profit sharing from a large company or even if you're small if you get an umbrella and they do your business they do everything for you those people can actually get into profit sharing and that's a good way because they all want to know what the business is doing and how much money 
and they'll work harder because they're going to get a part of it. Yeah, that, well, that makes sense, doesn't it? Hey, Jerry, yeah. I, I've I've got one final question for you because I know we've got to wrap things up. And if you've listened to this podcast before, you probably have heard that I asked for a Monday morning tip. And okay, so it's Monday morning. Someone bumps into you and they go, Jerry. I've got a business, may not be a podiatry business, but I have a business. What's the one tip you would give me that when my bum hits the chair Monday morning at 8.30 that you reckon I should do to improve my business? I want you to make every person that walks in this door feel like their family. That's your wife, your daughter, your son, your mother, your father. And if you treat everyone that way, we'll have a really good day and people will feel good about it and so will you. That's a brilliant bloody tip. <laughs> that is a great tip. And that that's something that, yeah, you, you'd actually have that written above the door. Treat everybody like family. Unless you don't like your family, then don't treat them that way. Uh, treat, them like, treat them like you treat somebody else's family. You always have to remember in medical, if you don't have patients, you don't need employees, nor you don't need doctors. Yeah. <laughs> the reason you're there is because of that patient. Yeah. Treat them like family. That is so true. So, Jerry, I want to thank you for being on It's No Secret with Dr. T. This has been fun. Um, I knew you were the right person to bring in to uh, talk talk about the role that you hold within the business that I think it, it's, it's a position that a lot of podiatry businesses, other people in the health industry, they set the business up and you know, they go out there, they meet a couple of people, go to the odd networking event, and then they sit back just thinking that everybody will just come flooding through their doors. And they don't realize it's something that you've got to constantly work at, whether it's going out and about meeting people, going to network events, doing online, social media, websites, blogs. There's so many aspects to actually building a business. And some people should really consider about employing someone in the position that you hold which is like a marketing director, and making sure everything actually gets done. Yeah. And Tyson, you know I love this kind of stuff. First of all, to be able to spend some time with you, not to be corny, but I've missed you for the last two years. It's been a little different. Yeah. And <laughs> it's an opportunity that I ever get. There's a couple of you guys out there, Dave Fries and you, that I laugh at every day. And it makes me feel good for what you're doing and what he's doing and how life can be a smile every day if you want it. You gotta love what you do, can't control everybody. Just love life and go on. That is, a, that is a perfect way to finish, Jerry. Thank you very much for coming on the show. You have a great one, buddy. Well, I hope you enjoyed listening to Jerry today. As I mentioned earlier on, Jerry and I have known each other for a few years, and it's one of these things, whenever we do get together, we talk marketing because we both love it and it's surprising the amount of ideas that you can throw at each other which creates new ideas and that's the importance of hanging around like-minded people and if you've never considered having a marketing director in your business and you want to know more about how you develop that particular position please send me an email tf at tysonfranklin.com i had a marketing director in my own podiatry business and I think there's a lot of businesses that would really benefit by having somebody in that particular role. Okay, that's it from me. Look after yourself, look after your family, and I will talk to you again next week. Bye for now.